Hi, in this video, I will introduce you how to build 3D applications with WebGL. I will introduce how to set up the development environment and uh, let's build this rotating triangle. So let's get started. First, what is WebGL? It is simply a JavaScript API that we can access from Canvas element and it can help us do a lot of work related to graphics rendering, reduce a lot of work on CPU side. When using WebGL, we have to link program for GPU with JavaScript, and we have to write the word text shader and fragment shader in JLSL, which is a language for, for the shaders, and the language is like C and C++. So let's have a look of the code. You can find the code for rendering this triangle on the video description. So the first step is to get the WebGL context. You can set background color of the context to another color. Mm, and this step is, is just very simple. We will get the GL variable, which is the WebGL context. And next step, we have to create the shaders and link the shader to a program. Can let's take a look of the create shader function. We get the GL context, we get the type of the shaders. And actually there are two types of shader, as I mentioned, there are word text shaders and fragment shader. And the shader source, which is the source code, um, which is written in string. And for the word text shader, they are just uh, telling the GPU that what are the points specifically for rendering the graphics? In this case, there are three points. And for the fragment shader, they are just solving a problem that what are the color for the points on the graphics? I can hard code a color, um, say yellow. Uh, I should use one. Okay. So that's how it works. Let me change it back. After we create the shaders, we should pass the shaders to a function that kind of like the create shaders. Uh, after the programs are being linked, I will check whether it succeeds. If it failed, just uh, throw a warning on the console. By doing the work on step two, we got the program. In step three, with some basic configuration, we should use this program specifically, and we should tell GPU how we're gonna pass the data through JavaScript application to GPU. Um, there are different types of data in shaders. There are attributes, uniform, wiring, and there are texture. I'm not going to mention texture today. So if, if the data type is attribute, it's bounded to a data buffer. If the data is uniform, it's just like a global variable that we can um, set it directly. Uh, you may worry about uh, what does this 2f mean. Actually, it can be 3f, but the length of the variable should be uh, vector 3. Right? In step 3, we use the program and we build the bridge between JavaScript application to GPU by telling GPU how we're going to pass the data. The next step, as we set up the buffer, we should pass the data to the, to the buffer. So I created a point list. Let me try to change it from comes to let. And uh, create another triangle just for display how it works and uh, six you see and let's uh, change it to so the reason I put it into a request animation frame is uh, I want uh, this triangle rotated, as mentioned in the title. So let's have a try. So I'm just uh, say, uh, 
um, for rotating, we have to have a variable which is the angle, uh, and the initial value is zero. And I will put, I will increase it by just a small number for each frame. Make it smaller, and uh, I'm going to say radius as my math. Sine and sine angle, and uh, for this one, I'm going to use say cosine. Oh, so what's wrong? Unspecified token, okay. And uh, it's not exactly what I did in the first view because those points should also be rotated, but I think you already can do it by yourself. Mm. So that's it for the first video. You can just uh, try the code on your side and uh, if you have any question, um, please we can discuss those questions together because I'm also learning the WebGL. In next video, I will introduce you how to transform 2D graphics in WebGL, such as scale, um, translate, and uh, rotate. So thank you for watching. See you.